Hi, my name is Patrick Faulkner. I'm a Bay Area musician and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so in this particular video, I'm showing how I use my Line 6 Helix in conjunction with a few other pieces of gear and how I feel like I really am able to get any amp sound I want. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, I'll kind of walk you through a couple ideas and some things that I've been dealing with for the last, you know, 20 plus 18 to 20 years since I've been playing guitar, just dealing with gear and tone and kind of chasing that idea. And so this is kind of the, at least for me, my ultimate kind of live rig, um, not interesting, interestingly enough, this isn't exactly what I use. But if I could, if I had my my um, my freedoms wherever I would play, if I could use this rig every time, it would be a dream. So uh, stick around and I'll get into it uh, straight away. So first, uh, first thing that I utilize is a small um, tube powered uh, little amp. Um, it's made by Orange, called the Micro Terror. And um, interestingly, they put a 12AX7 in, in, the, in the front end of the amp, and then they offer a phones out. Um, and so I'm basically just running it straight through, kind of as a really clean, sterile um, input stage. Um, the one thing I've noticed, pretty much any modeler, any kind of gear, whatever it is, anything that's really digital, um, I feel like they really struggle with um, input signal. And so if you're giving them too much signal, um, they're, they're going to distort. They're going to they're gonna act in ways that they really shouldn't. And I don't know when they design these, what's the, what's the um, you know, how do they expect us to use them? I know that the Helix is kind of meant to be an all-in-one thing. Um, but I feel like it has some pitfalls and the one, th the one rule I have about modeling is less is more, the less I have to model a thing and the more, uh, I can get from, from the real, you know, circuitry. Um, I feel like you're going to get more, it's going to be more realistic. It's going to feel right. It's going to feel better. Um, you know, I, at some point I realized they're going to be completely just modeling guitars and we're all just going to own one guitar and everything's just going to be in that one guitar completely modeled. Um, I don't know if that's really true, but I kind of hope not because I feel like there's a lot that can get lost when you do that. And so I'm basically just running into that preamp. Um, you can see the settings there in the image. Um, they're pretty low. Um, they're pretty basic. It's just a, again, it's just a really really kind of clean sound. Um, I've even used a compressor, um, the MXR uh, studio compressor, fantastic compressor. Um, I'll even use that if I don't want to bring the amp. Um, but I almost always go into something else, not just the helix. Um, that would be my first real tip to anybody who's using it. Um, even when I play live, um, I've recently adopted utilizing, um, some IRs, um, the own hammer ones were great. I found a screaming deal on 64 IRs if you go um, into their website. But I will deal with that in a completely other video. And so after that, um, the micro tear, I'm going to go straight into the Helix. All of the modeling, all the sounds are really generated through the Helix. If I'm using pedals, effects, delay, reverb, whatever else. Literally everything else is going to be pushed through and out of the Helix. Um, but when I utilize it through the DT50, um, I'm still going to be using the full amp sim, but I'm not using speaker sims. Um, I have recently found out that the DT50s, um, the technology that they utilized to emulate the speakers sounds really, really awesome when you run it through the amp. Um, I bought a um, the 412 cabinet that is supposed to come with the DT50, the, the company cabinet. And then I removed the two specially designed selection speakers, which are, I don't think they're full range speakers, but 
they're a, a wider range than a normal guitar cabinet speaker would be. Um, I don't really know the specs because it's a special design speaker. You don't, you know, they don't put those out, but I know that they've recently released, um, a new, uh, model or speaker that I think is the exact same speaker as this one. Um, and those ones, they want to charge you like 300 bucks a piece for, um, I bought the cabinet, a 412 cabinet with two vintage thirties and two of these specially designed speakers for $300. So go figure. Uh, nobody wants these amps. Um, that my suggestion is I picked up the amp for 500 bucks and I got the 412 cab for 300. Um, now when I plug into the DT 50, um, I turn the preamps off and to do that, you actually need to get a special program. Uh, the one that I use is called the DT T Customizer 0 0.8 Beta. Um, it runs on Mac. Um, I've seen some really nice ones uh, for PC, but since I'm a Mac user, I've been using Mac since 08. Um, there's no going back. <laughs> there's just no way. Um, so utilizing the, these three pieces, the Micro Terra for a true um, guitar to 12 ax7 preamp feel and sound um and then i can dial in as much or as little gain as i want through that and then i can adjust kind of the high end and overall volume um i'll get a full range signal out of the orange there's no speaker simulation at all and you don't need to plug it into a cabinet because it's um uh, it's a solid state power amp and so it's totally fine just sitting there doing nothing it will not blow up i guarantee it do not worry. Um, straight into the Helix and then pretty much whatever amps I use because I use such a low amount of gain. Um, pretty much whatever amps I use, I just get from the, the Helix. And then I turn the preamps off. I leave the, the speaker sims on in the DT50. And then I just go out of those two specially designed Celestian speakers I have put into a 212 cabinet. Um, I end up having to run it at 4 ohms because the speakers that came with uh, the amp are eight ohm speakers. So I can't remember if I put them in series or parallel. I think it's series. Um, yeah, I believe it's series. Um, it runs at four ohms. Um, so it's, it's, um, a really high, um, efficiency kind of setup. Um, you know, everything kind of works together really, really well. Um, I'll even put the orange into my Apollo twin if I want to do like, um, work and I just want to get a really simple, really easy sound. I don't want to deal with the helix or if I'm teaching online since we're all teaching online now or performing online or whatever you're doing, it's going to be online because nobody can be there. Um, so yeah, uh, those three pieces, I put them together and then in the video you're going to see, I, um, I picked out four, four different amps. Um, the, the double, the U S double, the normal channel from a, basically a Fender twin. Then I picked the bright channel from a Marshall Plexi. Uh, what do they call it? The Brit Plexi, um, bright channel. And then I picked an Essex a 30 or the Vox AC 30. And then the Soldano or the solo lead, whatever Helix calls them, the, the Sedano SLO 100 lead channel. So I used those three amps, the first, uh, four amps, sorry. Um, the first section, it's going to be me, um, just playing the amp, kind of messing with some, um, uh, you know, some settings a little bit, maybe turning the gain up or changing the EQ a little bit, just kind of giving you a feel for what it sounds like with what would be the stock speaker. Um, these are all amps that, um, were included in the DT50 um, after Line 6 released the HD500 um, release in like 2014, I think, or some somewhere around there. You can actually still go get it if you buy the DT50, and it sounds great. But the Helix preamps and the Helix amps are actually much better than the HD uh, models. Go figure. I mean, processors got better, RAM's cheaper, like you know, any of that kind of stuff. So they can just pack more into a unit. That's the same size as, yeah. Um, 
the HD 500 or even the X. Um, so I use the Helix amps into the DT 50. Um, and so as you walk through it, you'll see the clean, the clean fender sound, which I think sounds amazing. Um, the gritty kind of, you know, overdriven plexi sound, the again, gritty kind of overdriven AC 30 sound, which I'll clean up a little bit. Um, I don't do a lot of it because that amp is supposed to be kind of mid to, to light to mid gain kind of a sound. And then the all out full gain Saldano sound. And so each of them is using a different speaker. So that's the thing to notice. And then just the amounts of gain and kind of the overall characteristics. When you realize I'm getting all of these sounds from three pieces of gear and my, um, and my Strat, I'm just using, and these are true, true single coils. Um, they're not even like amazing single coils. They're Duncan designed Alnico two, low output um, pickups. I got out of a Squire, a Squire parts thing. So the body's Mexican, the neck is American, tuners are American, the bridges are Wilkinson. I kind of pieced the whole thing together and made it look like you know a real Strat. So, um, so if you want to stick around, uh, listen to me noodle for 40 minutes <laughs> um you get a real feel i think for kind of the versatility of this rig and then in the second set so each amp has one section of me playing um the amp um, with one speaker um uh, it's all written in the little the little um uh liners and then after that there's another section same amp I'm going to start switching through the speaker cabinet so you can hear, oh, what does this amp sound like when I change it? So if I if I change it to a speaker cabinet and I didn't like the sound, then I go in and I'll adjust maybe the compressor, mostly just the EQs, and I'll just re-EQ it, you know, because anytime you put an amp into a speaker, it totally changes the sound of the amp. And that's what I'm really trying to show you is um, how amazing Line 6 like this, this gear is the DT 50. Like I've been playing the helix for over a year now and I've been gigging with it for over a year. Like as soon as I got it, I was using it as my main rig and I've loved it and I've hated it and I've got really great sounds and I've gotten really awful, really terrible sounds. And I feel like you, you, the helix, you know, is that brush that can do anything. And sometimes it does things that you, not even a brush. What would you call that? Like your angry child? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't have kids. So I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's that's really what I'm trying to show in this video. I'm using one one microphone. Um, it's a Shure uh, Shure KSM twenty seven. It's a it's a project condenser mic. I have you know I have a six oh nine here and I don't like it. I have an SM fifty seven. And I don't really like it, especially for this rig where I need I need a mic that's gonna be um, very sensitive. Those both those mics are higher pressured um, mics, and so you need to kind of turn the amp up really loud. And right now I'm doing this in my house at night, sometimes at 2 a.m. I can't be that loud, so I need a mic that's more sensitive um, than either one of those mics can be in in my house. So I use a, a small piece of baffle around it. Um, it's actually a part of a drum cage, um, but it's Owens Corning uh, 826, 926, whatever it is, the Owens Corning uh, soundproofing material um, with a, like a plywood backing. And then um, I just kind of cover it up and put the mic in there and try and get it into a sweet spot where I think it's going to sound pretty good overall. And then I just change the, change the cabinets and change the EQs on each of the speakers to really, um, to really kind of dial in that sound. Um, and it's, it's so easy to do it like that. It's so easy. Um, I probably do each, each of the speakers after I start changing the cabinets, I probably go through four or five and you'll see I'm EQing things. I'm adjusting things and getting different sounds from different speaker cabinets. And they sound so realistic later on. I'll probably make another video, um, where I am 
comparing the actual amp to the DT50, um, I don't have a lot of these amps because, I mean, I don't know anybody who owns like 60, 60 different tube amps, all multiple thousands of dollar amps. Like I don't, <laughs> that's the reason why I bought the Helix, especially over something like a Kemper. Um, I'll get into that at another time if you really want me to, but the concept of a Kemper versus the Helix, the Kemper to me is like a, like a really nice picture. And the DT 50 is like a video game. It's trying to put you into a three dimensional world where the Kemper is just trying to take a really great digital photo of your amp at one particular setting. It doesn't allow you to adjust all the characteristics in the amp. And so that's another thing to notice is I'm adjusting the hum balance. I'm adjusting the, um, the sag control, the bias of the amps, um, all of those characteristics. And then I just put it through the power amp section of the DT 50. Um, let me make this clear though. When I do it, the, the helix is going from the main output on the helix, no loops or anything to the front end of the DT 50 on the high input, uh, channel. So, and then I turn off the preamp that way I can still use the master volume. If you plug it into the return on the effects loop, you're going to get a hundred percent of the power tube uh, sound. And so then I'm adjusting the volume from, um, the pedal board and I'm not able to utilize the master volume. So then my amp is running full out all the time and actually burned, almost burned up an attenuator, um, doing that. So, um, be careful. <laughs> Uh, be safe, have a good time, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 